Hello and welcome to this week's service, which we are offering on behalf of our churches in Pullox Hill, Flitton and Silso. I'm Liz Coulson and I worship here at our church in Pullox Hill. Wherever you are watching this and however you are feeling, we are so glad that you have decided to join in and that we can gather today in Jesus' name to offer our prayers, reflection and praise. If you would like to follow our worship, then a service sheet is available on our website for you. Today, as we move into this new year and fresh starts, our Bible reading takes us back to the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan and to the start of his ministry. So let's start our worship with a prayer. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan, you revealed Jesus as your son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now to our first hymn, which tells us of the baptism of Jesus. The music will play and the words will be on the screen, so please feel free to join in. You might want to sing out loud or maybe worship by pondering the words. Our hymn is on Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry. to offer God our faults and failings from these last few days and to ask for his forgiveness and the freedom of a new beginning. Holy Father, grant us pardon and peace, cleanse us from all sin, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in peace and life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us 
and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, and this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now here's our reader, Gillian Kern, with some thoughts on our reading. The picture we've just seen was taken by me at a baptism site on the River Jordan in 2017, where I had the privilege of watching a group of Ethiopian adults being baptised by total immersion in the same river in which John baptised Jesus. Malcolm and I were on a three-week study programme at Tantua Ecumenical Centre in Jerusalem. The baptism was a joyful occasion with great celebration, prayerfulness, hope and a lot of gospel singing. It was a longed-for moment, one for which they prepared for months, if not years. They'd been baptised in the body of Christ, in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, in the same river in which John had baptised Jesus with water. It made me stop and recall my baptism and contrast it with that of Malcolm's. I was christened as a baby, so my baptism was chosen for me, but Malcolm chose it for himself as a young adult. We talked about the ways in which our journeys in Christ had been shaped by that difference. There were some, I was raised in a Christian home where faith was always present and formal worship was a constant part of my life. I call it my slow burn. Malcolm felt called and went in search of the church and Christ. It was intentional and strong. But the conclusion was that in the end it didn't matter because we both found discipleship and the grace of God in our lives. The issue, issue of believer's baptism versus infant baptism is a challenge for some Christians, given the biblical example set by John, Jesus and the disciples. But, as we found, baptism is always done in faith, either by the individual or on behalf of the child. What we all discover is that a fundamental change occurs in us when we are baptised. That small splash of water, the sign of the cross, and the answer to the baptismal questions changes our lives, whether we make those commitments for ourselves or have them made for us as a gift from God by those who love us. Paul likens child baptism to the practice of the presentation of babies and young children in the temple, where they were dedicated to God and became members of the covenant between God and his people. The baptism that John offered to adults also offers links to our Jewish heritage because it has similarities with the Jewish ritual at Tadila, adult total immersion in water for the purpose of purification. But John's offer was different. He was offering a ritual of total immersion in the River Jordan for repentance and forgiveness of sin. 
In the Orthodox Jewish Bible, baptism is called Christian Tevila, creating a continuum from the Jewish cleansing ritual of purification to baptism with water for repentance and forgiveness, and then to baptism with water and the Holy Spirit. John's offer was a shift in Jewish practice, which must have required some deep spiritual reflection by those who went and received it. But his proclamation that I have baptised you with water, but he, Jesus, will baptise you with the Holy Spirit, must have been incomprehensible to those who heard it. And it doesn't answer the question, why did Jesus need to be baptised by John for repentance and forgiveness when he was without sin? Some have suggested that it was to establish his human identity and empathy with us. Some, that Jesus marked the beginning of his earthly ministry with the baptism of repentance and forgiveness and completed the story of the purpose of his ministry after the cross and resurrection with baptism in both water and the Holy Spirit. After Peter's Pentecost sermon, many in the crowd asked how they should respond to the events of that day and he replied that they should repent and be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ so that their sins may be forgiven and they can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul is very clear that by being baptised we become people of God. His new covenant, created by the cross and the resurrection. Paul wrote that we become part of one body, the body of the church. We become God's hands, eyes, feet, strength and heart on earth. We become people of his kingdom on earth. Whether others choose our Christian path for us by having us baptised as children, or we find Christ as adults, it marks the beginning of a whole new life of grace, of forgiveness, of the presence of God's spirit in us, of our union with Jesus, and our becoming part of the worldwide Christian church. And as our tutor at Tantua said, once we become disciples through baptism, we rest in the assurance of God's grace and are dedicated to his service on earth. Thank you, Gillian. Even in these difficult times, we can bring the things and people that are on our hearts and minds to our Father God. Let's pray. Father God, in a universe that seems so immense, it is easy to feel powerless. Yet we know that just as you told Jesus at his baptism that you loved him, you love each one of us. Thank you that we can come to you with our prayers for ourselves and others. We pray for our world, the one you created, but seems right now to be in such a mess. We ask that you would show each of us how we can do something to make things better, to make it the world you wanted it to be. We raise to you though those in so many walks of life who have to make decisions for all of us. We ask that you would give your wisdom to those in government and other leadership roles. Help them make decisions that are for the common good, even if those decisions are not popular. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for your church. Help us, good Father, to live in a way that points people to the fact that your light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never conquered it. We ask that you bless and inspire our vicar, the Reverend David, the ministry team and PCCs as they lead us through these difficult days and make decisions about services and reaching out to our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our villages and the people around us. We are aware that many people live alone. Many are struggling with making ends meet. We think of those trying to help children do their schoolwork at home, those who provide for their families and friends, and those who simply try to keep going. Father, we know that you care for every sparrow that falls, 
and that you care deeply for each of us. We ask that those in need will feel and be aware of your love, your concern, and see you in action in their lives. Help them to give their cares to you, for you care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we know that in his ministry, people brought sick people to Jesus. This morning, we bring to you, to you those we know who are sick, those who are dying, and those who grieve. We take a moment of quiet to name them to you. Father, we pray for healing for those who are sick, for comfort for the dying and the bereaved, and the certainty that you answer our prayers in a way that is best, even if it doesn't always seem that way at the time. Almighty Father, we know that this pandemic cannot be stayed by human power. We thank you for what people can do to help, but we humbly ask that you will stay this virus, that you will turn back the tide and heal our world as only you can do. We pray this will make people see your power, your love and your infinite care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you that just as you told Jesus at his baptism that he was your beloved son, you have adopted us into your family. Thank you that you listen to us and there is nowhere we can be where you are not there with us. Stay with us this coming week and help us to live lives that witness to our faith in you. Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus. Amen. And let's now share in our family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We finish with a hymn that is a real offering of praise and adoration to Jesus. It has a great tune and words. Please join in with Crown Him with Many Crowns.
for being with us and sharing in our worship. Is this, if this is the first time you've joined us, then do please join us again next week. And please remember to pray for those on our prayer list, which will come up on screen at the end of our service. If you or someone else you know would like to be added to this, then do please let us know. Our contact details are on both our webpage and a church near you page. And now our closing prayer. May the love of the Father, the tenderness of the Son, and the presence of the Holy Spirit gladden your heart and bring peace to your soul in this and every day. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain upon us all now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.